So this is really cool. We are at the American Armory Museum in Fairfield. And this vehicle I'm about to show you, it's a half-track vehicle. It saw duty in World War II on the U.S. side. After World War II, it was put on loan to the Israeli Army, where it served in the Six-Day War. And during that time... Oh, that's alright. During that time, this actually saw combat. And if you look on the inside, here you'll see uh, marks from bullet ricochets that came into the vehicle. And you'll see where it's been welded up from bullet holes where this vehicle was actually struck with live rounds in Israel. And I'm glad I'm not the guy that was back here when that happened. And this is all from uh, bullets artillery coming into the vehicle. So, it's probably safe to say that somebody was severely wounded or killed in the back of this thing during that time. You can see more weld spots over here from where it was struck. Your 50 cals. Pretty cool place. You have the time, you should come out here. And the boy, Riley. <laughs> Show you some more exterior. And then, of course, we've seen this on my Facebook page before General Patton's Jeep. This was actually in service during World War II over in the theater as well, and General Patton sat in this seat. And his driver, who he called Jeep, actually signed the inside of the uh, glove box before he passed away. And then the seat General Patton originally had in this Jeep broke. And his driver, who we call Jeep, replaced it with a German seat from a German vehicle, a German command vehicle that they had found. Patton wasn't very happy with it. However, it stuck. General Patton had a 50 caliber machine gun mounted onto his Jeep because he wanted a bigger gun than the other guys. So they all had 30 calibers. Now. And when he when he's in there and the hatches are all closed, he sees out through here. Just look up. Just look up a second. Just <laughs> <laughs> so the two handles right there, that's how they steer it. One make pull the right one would go right, the left one it would go left, the big gas pedal on the bottom. And other than that, other than that, it's an automatic, just like your car. You will shift to your left. Now, they would be wearing a helmet with, with radio communications. Uh, the other is, is loud, but the commander in the back will give instructions on you know, where to be going. So, to be, to be a tank driver, you've got to be a little guy with a bad attitude. <laughs> Aluminum. Oh. Great, crawl on in. Let's take a look around. I'll show you around in there. 
So there would have been four guys in the back. You had the commander was in the top right, the main gunner is ahead of him. You had a loader man and a radio man in here. I'll put them in this seat right here. That seat right here, the gunner seat right there. Watch your head. I'll show you how they see out. Okay, turn around, face that way. Now see this right here. Take it, go up there, put your eyes and look up there. The Take a look. That's how they. That's how they see where they aim. The, where they're aiming the main gun. Put your eye up there. Put your eye. It's like got like a binocular. See, that's how they see where the guns pointed. How to aim it. Neat, huh? Yeah. So the commander, like I said, he was back here, and he. he they would have been wearing headsets, and he would be giving instructions on where to go and. Uh, where to shoot. Now, if you notice all these rounds here, again, you had each projectile. So they had to set the balance for the for the projectile. They had to figure out whether it was illumination, heat Hello. seeking, smoke grenade, whatever. But they put the main projectile into the gun. Little cartridges of gunpowder go into the shell, depending on how far they wanted to go. Slide it in, pull a handle, and lock it all together. Wow. But they loaded each and every round. Uh, a good a good loader man was supposed to be able to load this thing every 45 to 60 seconds. That would be quite a feat. Yeah. Thank you.